Namaste beautiful yogis and today I have a video that I've been putting off for a really long time uh, I've been meaning to share this video maybe for <laughs> I want to say for three years now and I always put it off because I kind of want to tell the story in the right way <laughs> and also I, uh, it's such a long story I kind of know that I will miss a bunch of parts of the story so maybe there will be part two to do or it, I will just address questions in part two and I'll just do additional information but I'll get started now with my healing story about seven years ago I went through something really traumatic a really really traumatic event in my life which I will get into right now and uh, from there I had a very long healing and recovery story which was one of uh, probably the most blessed experiences in my life so before I begin I just want to make that disclaimer that this video is I wanted to share this video not because I w want to share my story I actually don't care to share my story because I want to share my classes that can benefit people but my story it's kind of private it's kind of personal but at the same time I know it will inspire a lot of you or it can help someone that is going through the same thing or through something different but with the same techniques you can heal and heal 100% and be as vibrant as you can be be the best version of yourself so um, seven years ago I went through a very traumatic event which was I moved into a new place with my partner maybe within a month of moving in I, I want to say within two weeks of moving in I started having symptoms of um, um, inflammation joint pain uh, general pain and general uh, lower energy sweating at night and so forth but uh, within maybe three to four weeks is when uh, my a few of my joints swelled up so badly that I actually thought I have an injury so that was the first thing I thought I have a knee injury because my knee swelled up it was red and swollen and I couldn't walk there was mold in the toxic mold in the place but I didn't of course know that since the mold wasn't a smelly mold or anything like this it was three types of molds which are kind of um, they don't they don't have that mildew mold smell and most of it I assume was under the ground of the building because there was leaks around the building so I'm assuming a lot of it was uh, things that were just in the structure of the building that was the first symptom basically sweating at night we're talking waking up with perfuse just drenched in water type of sweating at night and uh, just uh, the first thing was uh, what I thought was I tore my meniscus or something like that but I wasn't sure so I decided I'll give it a little bit of time to heal because I figured it's maybe I overworked myself or there was too much uh, uh, maybe I was teaching too many classes I was teaching 20 classes a week maybe I just overdid it right so I figured I'll give it time and it will heal any injury that is not too bad that doesn't require surgery would begin to improve over a month or so but a month passed second month passed I think I waited two months and a half maybe and it wasn't getting better and it wasn't getting worse it was just kind of moving around the pain I started having to quit some of my classes and my jobs because it was becoming pretty painful to work and on top of it the pain started to uh, move into my entire body right so I'm having now kind of inflammation in my wrists in my elbows shoulders you name it it started to dawn on me maybe pretty quickly but I, I just wanted to put it aside like I didn't want to think about it but it started to dawn on me that it's something systemic so something rheumatic or something a little more serious than an injury so after a while I totally didn't want to but I scheduled uh, an appointment with a rheumatologist because I was in my late 20s so I didn't want at that age to schedule an appointment with rheumatologist that sounds so daunting anyways I scheduled an appointment and I went to the rheumatologist and uh, she said that I have crazy inflammation all over my body which I should have known but I just did not want to face the fact that there is something dramatic and dramatic happening and I just don't know why so she did a bunch of blood tests I insisted on Lyme's disease test because I, start, I started suspecting Lyme's disease and any other autoimmune disorder and I, it turned out, I turned out the, neg uh, the blood test was negative for Lyme's disease, for 
uh, rheumatoid arthritis and for a bunch of other things. So based on my blood test, she said uh, it's a uh, reactive arthritis and she wanted to prescribe me immunosuppressants and she wanted me to check in uh, and come uh, there for uh, organ uh, failure test every month or two. So I said no, I'd rather die than, you know, damage my organs with immunosuppressants and thank god I didn't because at the time I didn't know I'm going through, uh, this is mold exposure and if you take immunosuppressants I it's probably a very bad idea. So basically, uh, after that, I continued going to immunologists and uh, people that may have an answer for me, right? I was doing blood tests and trying to find if I have uh, anything in my blood that can show what's going on. Because just a month before this happened, right? I was super energetic, super healthy. Everything was going great and all of a sudden, clash. Everything continued progressing further worse. Uh, it wasn't just uh, joint issues, it was, uh, if you go down the Lyme's disease um, uh, list of symptoms, that was pretty much what I was dealing with. Severe brain fog, so I couldn't think straight at all, at, at all at any time of the day. I would sometimes, maybe when there is a bloom of mold in the house, I'll throw up uh, in the house. Basically, I had to slowly, within a few months, quit all my jobs because I couldn't hold a plank at the time because my wrists, everything was just, I couldn't use anything. I, earlier before that, I did get an MRI for my knee and it showed that there is no uh, actual, and nothing is uh, damaged in there. So it was strictly just like insane level of inflammation. So uh, I started having anaphylactic shocks, uh, I went to the ER one time with my eyes totally red and just pouring water out of them for no particular reason, just my eyes were reacting to it and still no answers. I still didn't understand what the cause is. But I kept thinking it's probably because Lyme's disease tests are not very uh, accurate so I kept thinking it's probably Lyme's disease and it's just not registering on the test. I was trying to take certain herbs and things just to kind of support my system but since I don't know what I'm dealing with and I'm still exposed to, to the toxin that is making me sick, things are getting worse and worse. Besides uh, all the symptoms that I included, there was a systemic candida, digestive issues, uh, oh, and uh, finally, after a year and a half to two, we decided to move out of that place. When we moved out and removed everything from the closet, uh, we saw mold on there and I had already suspected mold but it, I was in disbelief plus the brain fog I couldn't think straight at all so it wasn't it was it was a bad situation in which I just couldn't even think for myself so um, once uh, we saw the mold we got a company that tests for mold and they came in they tested the place it was through the roof I tested for 50 molds uh, I went to an allergy test and on my back the prickly skin test and they tested me for 50 molds and I was only allergic to the three molds that were found in the house. That kind of led to an autoimmune disease which that's why I feel that my story is so important because a lot of people are dealing with autoimmune diseases that are just a result of being exposed to toxins. Even if you're not exposed to mold, you may be exposed to just over uh, a, a long period of time, you may have been exposed to pesticides. To toxins in your food, in your environment, um, or maybe you live near farms that use a lot of pesticides, or it, it just there's so many ways to get exposed to toxicity, and the body at some point just shuts down and says, Enough, I can't deal with it, like a drop more of toxicity. So I moved out of that place, and things actually got worse after I moved out because it just my system collapsed. I couldn't get out of bed at all uh, on many days. I would just not have any energy to just function. And had systemic candida, inflammation. I went to a natural um, doctor and my partner took me there because I couldn't even walk. I was just like, uh, I, he just grabbed me and took me to a doctor. I was just kind of in a vegetable state that day and he did a lot of hormonal testing and he said all my hormones are they were all it's close to zero all the major hormones so he said i will die if i don't go on um, uh, hormonal therapy which again i was <laughs> smart enough to continue being stubborn uh, so i said no and at that time uh, 
prior to getting uh, sick, I was eating. Uh, Years before that, I was always eating the diet that I'm eating currently, which I will get into. And then when I got sick, I was eating kind of a vegetarian diet, but basically higher in fat. So, you know, when you have any type of candida issues or any type of other issues, they always say stay away from sugar, avoid sugar, avoid fruit, that, that feeds it, and so forth. So I was kind of eating more the lower glycemic index fruit. And was eating more nuts and such things and I wasn't getting any improvement. Uh, the naturopath prescribed maybe <laughs> like 30 things to take a day. It was just handfuls and I just had to, it was around the clock taking things and that maybe helped a tiny bit but overall it didn't have much of a, an effect on me. I was still with low energy. Actually one, um, I was struggling with adrenal fatigue because my adrenals also got affected by the whole exposure. Toxicity is very damaging to your system and very taxing on your adrenals. And also thyroid issues. I, one time I was hiking and we took photos and after I got home and I looked at the photos I had a whole bulge in my thyroid area. So I ran to the mirror and I look in the mirror and yes, my thyroid is completely bulging. So I was like, oh, that explains the tiredness and the adrenal fatigue and all that. So. All my hormones were just a mess, my digestive uh, health was a mess, everything was a mess. My uh, joints were still completely uh, inflamed on some days worse than others, but it just was constant pain in most parts of my body, right? It will, it will be the knee, the shoulder, the, uh, at some point uh, the scariest thing was that I started to get uh, neck pain and I was extremely scared that I might get uh, spinal fluid inflammation and die. I'm not really laughing when I say this, but it was just some of the things that are pretty dangerous with uh, such form of systemic inflammation. And had I had a small dog at the time or a small child, they generally uh, most likely are most likely to die in such toxic environment. Anyways, I took this the entire time while I was going through this. I didn't feel sorry for myself. I was resistant to the process and I did not want to go through it and I just wanted to be my old me, full of energy and just healthy. But at the same time, I understood that this process is something that I need to go through because I myself am extremely interested in healing and in order to be helpful in the healing field, and I do, in, uh, my goal in life is to uh, offer healing through my work. Even if it's not hands-on, my, off, uh, my offering and my goal is to offer things that are tools and ways uh, for other people to heal. So I kind of understood it at the moment when I was going through that this is one of my initiation processes or uh, stages in life. And also I understood that it is gonna deepen me as a person. I did not, mostly I did not feel as a victim. I resisted it, as I said. I did not wanna go, uh, go through this because I just couldn't do a lot. But at the same time, the entire time I understood that this is this is not a random event, this is part of what is rerouting me. And funny enough, before this happened, I was working all these jobs that I was already done with. I didn't want to do them anymore, but I wouldn't quit because I'm just a very consistent person. If I start something, I want to see it completed. So I was continuing working jobs that were no longer part of my path. So because I was persevering in a, in a direction that I didn't need to be going in, that was almost like a blessing that rerouted me, said quit, it's time to quit and you will not quit unless you are forced to quit. So that is destiny's way or like a higher consciousness way of rerouting me in the right direction, even though it was through suffering, right? It wasn't a happy rerouting, it wasn't like oh opportunity open, just go in this direction, quit these jobs because something is opening up. But it was no, you have to have the capacity to let go of the old, let it go completely so that you can, uh, that will clear your head eventually and you can open another door in the future. So uh, how did I heal? After a while I realized I have to go back to the way I always ate and drop all the complexities out of my life, all the supplements. I was, as I said, uh, the list was super long and it was really expensive to be on those supplements because it was so many things. And most of them were natural, but it was just unnecessary if you're eating the wrong things. He also recommended that I eat a lot of, uh, not a lot, but a fair amount of meat and dairy and 
proteins and fats and so forth and um, I am very glad that I had the courage at the time to actually do something because my brain was not working at all I was in a constant brain fog it was just fog and um, I finally uh, realized that it is time to go back to basics, back to the way I used to it when I was uh, before this all happened. So I went just, I started just doing fruit. I actually read a book at the time, which I'm so glad I read at the time. It, it is called The Grape Cure. I don't remember the author, but I will post it down. I'll post the link to the, it's not even a book, it's a booklet. Uh, I'll post. A link to the book below because it's a just a tiny little book but it's very inspiring because it's about a woman that healed herself from uh, some major cancer just by fasting on grapes so I found a grape farmer organic grape farmer in the area and I was ordering big boxes of grapes at the time from him and that was my uh, main food I would eat grapes and I would, I would eat greens and that was my food for a while and as soon as I switched to this diet I started not knowing what to do with my energy from not being able to get up from bed it became wow I just want to clean up the house and do something else after I still had pain and the healing I must explain the healing I stuck with the diet for a long time eventually a little later on I added some herbs to my diet which I don't consider to be of absolute importance uh, unless you're an emergency and uh, it's an emergency your situation is dire then you should add herbs that will speed up the process but maybe they will give you a little more uh, healing crisis and uh, symptoms but in general I think diet is powerful enough for most people if you are a little older and you have long history of junk food and just dairy and all kinds of things that are uh, clogging to your system and to your lymphatic system then herbs will be very helpful but in general I just want to emphasize that for me even in a situation where I was close to dying and even my naturopath told me I will die <laughs> and my rheumatologist said she, she absolutely does not agree with me not going on medication and so forth I still think, think that diet was the most healing thing and the reason why I think that is because that is the one substance that we, we have control over and we take two to three or four times a day and any food plant food is essentially an herb that is a little more diluted so it's kind of like a, it's again of healing it ha, again has healing qualities so your food is the number one most important thing all the other things are bonuses but you have to in, in, include the best food if you have the best herbs but your food uh, is not good then I don't think the herbs will work. You need the best food and then herbs can just speed it up. Essential oils um, also helped me because I had to clean up my lungs after all of this. So I was uh, vaporizing essential oils. And um, I'm trying to think if I did anything else besides that diet. And that led to developing my system of yoga, which was already, I already had the idea for this system way before I even got sick or moved into this place but I didn't have time for it because I was teaching more than 20 classes a week and I was just extremely busy with something that I realized is not my direction anymore so I was moving strongly in the direction that I was done with and um, that helped me develop a system of yoga that is intense as I like intensity but also gentle on the adrenals and I was able to heal myself uh, dur uh, doing the classes that you can find on my channel this type of yoga and you can find my schedules on my website, weekly schedules of how to work out and how to rest and how not to overwork out because that's very important for healing. And that's how I ended up developing my system because part of healing is doing the right amount of exercise and doing the right type of exercise. And yoga, I don't need to explain to you how important yoga is for detox, for healing for emotional healing, for healing the body, for healing your joints, for strengthening your body, core, and just bringing your soul back in, in balance with your physical body, or balancing the two. And um, another thing is interval training is a very important part of healing your joints. It's counterintuitive for some people who think that this is very damaging to your joints just because they see jumping, but if you gradually uh, get into interval training, and I do have a beginner, 
uh, interval yoga course that is on Udemy and also you can get it on a USB on uh, my website if you are new to interval training. When you uh, do interval training in the right way, you're not only not damaging your joints, you're strengthening your joints from the mild impact. They're becoming stronger, you're increasing your bone density and you are detoxing because you're cleaning your lymph. It's stimulating to the adrenals and the kidneys so the kidneys are also uh, filtering a little better. So overall this led to the particular yoga I'm doing and that's why you don't see me doing a lot of very long classes. Here and there I like a long class but I don't think it's necessary for every single day because it can lead to exhaustion and fatigue and just we don't want to exhaust the body, we want to give it exa the exact amount of exercise and healing exercise and movement that it needs to without it being too much. And um, I will, uh, I hope that in the future this video people that are going to mold exposure can find it and maybe will understand that just um, dropping all the, when you google mold, exposure and diet, you will find the typical stuff that you find for candida. Don't have any fruit, fruit hits, fits candida, uh, just have protein. But the, the trouble with that type of advice is that protein is actually going to further excess protein. We're talking about excess protein, which very little takes. Uh, we literally require very little protein in our diet compared to what people think we do. So when you get a little too much protein, you already um, um, creating a lot of um, challenge for your kidneys. Once your kidneys are not working at their best, your lymphatic system gets backed up, your liver, your heart and so forth. It's a, just a chain re reaction and you can't heal from it and that's why they say certain diets, I don't want to name names, but there are certain diets that avoid sugar. Those diets take a year or two to heal candida, which is kind of ridiculous because you can actually clean it out of your system in a week or two and then you do need to heal the body for quite a while. It depends what you have been going through. I must say that my healing journey took years. Um, I felt 80% improvement within probably six months on a fruit and greens, leafy greens diet and the rest was a slow healing process. Even my first classes that you will find on my channel, I was still not completely healed, but I was I was still healing, but I had healed 90%. I would still deal with certain symptoms. A lot of them cleared up quickly. Some of them stayed for a little longer. I think I had brain fog for a year. Um, I had I actually thought that I probably have permanent brain brain damage and I would not be able to think straight again, but it cleared because when you give your body the right conditions your body can regenerate and uh, your internal organs can regenerate and even uh, high toxicity can be neutralized such as your liver can regenerate and so forth and uh, i think it took me a little longer maybe two three years to completely heal my joints there was always something not not enough to bother me uh to to stop what I'm doing, to stop me from what I'm doing, but enough to feel inflammation in my body on certain days. I just want to encourage anybody that is dealing with any type of autoimmune disease, with any type of uh, toxicity, with any type of hormonal imbalance, to just uh, um, take take it as a blessing first. Don't feel uh, like a victim ever. Uh, don't complain. Don't look for compassion from outside because sometimes that feeds the cycle of you're just looking for compassion and you are staying in that place but take take it as a blessing take it as a way for you to improve your life and who you are because usually those things are going to take you in a better direction if you take it as an opportunity to grow it will make you adopt a better diet, it will make you get into yoga, become more conscious, more compassionate, more aware of other people's suffering, you can become a healer yourself and so forth. So just take it as a blessing even if you're going through a hard time right now, just take it as a blessing and understand that everything passes as long as you're able to be flexible and open to change and open to what destiny is hinting at you or what life is hinting at you. After I recorded this video I realized that I wanted to add a few more things that I forgot to mention. 
uh, during the video, during the recording of the video, I forgot to mention the level of intensity um, this got to and also my emotional state at the time. So uh, this, at some point it got so bad, there was an episode where I had to go to the doctor because I swelled up so much that I actually looked nine months pregnant, I was retaining water and there was yellowing in on my skin was yellowing my eyes were yellowing and uh, this was all caused by allergies after i moved out of that place i basically had developed allergies to everything every food pollen on the street flowers uh, just random things and my symptoms were extreme dizziness and feeling that I can potentially faint so I have had to lay down and just kind of be done for the day if I get a very it, it was a spinning spell and dizziness and just kind of a sense of I can't maintain it and um, at the worst of it I started wanting to in my head I just was very very ready to die I just felt ready to die and I was wishing that I would actually die and don't have to go through this it was pretty it was very dramatic and it was very very traumatizing and although I could see the higher meaning of it at the time I still didn't care because the pain and suffering was so bad and the not knowing part was so bad that I just didn't care that maybe there is a, it's a purpose to it I understood consciously that there is a purpose to it but um, I at this point was hoping I will die basically as harsh as this may sound and there was another really um, kind of unpleasant side to it basically because of the brain fog I felt such disconnect from my uh, soul and from how I am as a person like all the um, inspiration that I used to always wake up uh, with and know the desire to learn and curiosity and just excitement about the world was gone because my brain was just not working and I realized that there is things that can temporarily cut off the, there is external factors that can temporarily cut off your connection to the divine not permanently but temporarily and that's pretty scary another thing that I forgot to mention is why uh, such a simple diet of just fresh raw fruits and leafy greens predominantly I was not very strict meaning I mostly ate that but if I go out I would get a salad or I would eat some other things I would have certain exceptions to the rule that were all plant-based but overall I would stick mostly to that type of diet and the reason why it is so healing is because only fruit can truly cleanse your system and clean your liver help you repair the kidneys and also it allows you to just get off of everything that is harsh on the body and it allows your body to step in and starts and to start doing the regeneration healing sweeping and so forth that is the reason why i'm so passionate about what i uh, recommend it's not just a belief but it's actually something that i have experienced and really through experience i realized that it's this is something so powerful and worth sharing worth spreading the word about and worth worth getting sometimes even criticism but i still want to still speak my truth and still share what can potentially help other people on top of such a lifestyle can be very healing for the soul because it's compassionate and your soul overall always wants to be in alignment with a higher consciousness in alignment with a higher ideal if i remember to add something else to it maybe i'll do another video but i think that kind of um, covers a big portion of it it was very emotionally challenging at some point my hair fell out and it was just a lot of symptoms that it was such a long list of symptoms that if i go over all of them you get a headache <laughs> it was a, a lot of things that were happening because the body was just really shocked 
by the level of toxicity that I was exposed to. Now I would like to add that such a diet that I recommend for detox and cleansing and healing is just a healing diet, not a long-term diet that you should stick to. In my regular life, I'm very much relaxed with my diet. I still always eat plant-based and most of my diet is just fruits and veggies, some nuts, some seeds, some pulses and some grains. But I'm relaxed, I'm not militant about my diet. During a healing uh, process or when you are very sick, that's the only time that I would actually suggest that you have to be very restrictive. And it's not really restrictive because you are still going to be full, but it's just that you're going to avoid a lot of the foods that are going to stop detoxing, such as fats, cold grains, and such things. Some steamed veggies are okay here and there, just don't make them the uh, base of your diet. But you can have exceptions during your healing and it will still work. You don't need to follow it 100%. But if you follow it approximately, it will work. I also hope that a lot of people that are exposed to mold can find this video and get off the sugar-free diet because that is extremely damaging, especially after mold exposure. That is the worst thing you can ever do. And probably a lot of those people will have a lot of problems till the rest of their life if they continue avoiding you know, good, fresh produce and they stick with the high-protein animal foods. So that is my healing journey. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to make a part two of this video because this is so overdue and I know that a lot of you will be surprised that I actually have gone through anything considering that at the moment, the way you see me, you just uh, see that I'm someone that just kind of, you know, does yoga <laughs> and does her thing. But yeah, a lot of us go through crazy stuff in life and uh, we just, we get through it and everything changes in life and we get to the other side of it and then there is blessings and more challenges and more growth and more learning and so forth. So uh, I hope this was helpful to you and maybe inspired some of you and maybe gave hope to some of you. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below and very soon after I get enough questions, I'll, get, I'll make part two because I'm sure I missed a lot of things and it was such a long healing journey that I'm sure I forgot a lot of it but you get the gist of it and uh, I will see you soon with another yoga class or a talk video namaste